Hello, and welcome to an OraCloud Plus Training as a Service video snippet. Learn to use and configure Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications in minutes, not hours. Hello, and welcome to a quick video presentation on how to manage or how to walk through complex POs or orders with what they call retention or retainage. This video is intended for advanced users looking to learn more about Fusion's PO retainage capabilities. It explains retainage, transacting with retainage, managing retainage, paying final retainage amounts, and points out some of the possible concerns with this new functionality. And again, these are just possible concerns based on first glance. This video, as with all videos, can be found within FAST, our Fusion application support tool. This video can be found under deployment within the PO training center. We'll probably add it to some other training centers as well, because it, you'll see in here in a second, it kind of crosses different functional work areas. If you want access to fast, don't forget to email us at or cloud, or excuse me, at access at or cloud plus, please put your name and contact information in the email. And then if you don't mind, set the email title to fast access request. Okay, so key topics are as follows. What is retainage? Enabling retainage within Fusion. Requesting with retainage. Ordering with retainage. Invoicing with retainage. Managing retainage amounts. And paying retainage out. And then as I mentioned earlier, We'll end with some quick thoughts regarding potential issues or challenges. Again, not trying to be negative, just what I see in first glance. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, what are retainage and retention? So retainage is a portion of the agreed upon contract price deliberately held back until the work is substantially complete to assure that contractor or subcontractor will satisfy their obligations. You see this a lot in construction, uh, architectural engineering construction. Uh, and then obviously reten retention is money withheld by one party in a contract to act as security against incomplete or defective works. So first enabling retention or rather retainage, excuse me. So this is pretty easy. You go within the document styles within PO or SSP self-service procurement, and you enable this particular function within that document style. Uh, this is done under the complex work section. Next, you're going to want to request with retainage. So this is a little bit of a challenge. You can see here a couple milestones we added to a project, but retainage is not available on the rack. So it'll need to be communicated to a buyer and communicated means amount or max, which you'll see here in a minute. I put on here, it might involve some DFFs, descriptive flex fields, just because that the communication vehicle isn't currently on the rack. Now, there's a lot who would say, well, you wouldn't see it on the rack, it's policy, and you'd have it as part of a sourcing event over a certain dollar, which may be accurate, in which case this would not be an issue for you. Okay, so now we get into the meat of this, ordering with uh, ordering a PO with retainage. Okay, so now we just need to make sure somehow when we are, right, so there's always three ways that your baby approved rack gets to become a mama PO. And that is either because it's linked to an agreement, because you're letting all negotiated lines create or auto-generate POs, or via this process, and you see the little image here um, on the bottom left, that image is within process requisitions in slang called the buyer workbench. And this is when a buyer is grabbing their POs, or excuse me, their approved recs, and looking to create POs. So the point of that first bullet, hard to communicate, blah, 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 I have to remember to set the document style. Second bullet is if you look at that add all selected box, it's the one, two, three, third field down is that document style. You have to remember to set it. And so that's just, it's not the end of the world, but it's important depending on how you get to PO. Obviously, if you're getting there through sourcing, it's a little bit of a different animal and that's a different discussion. But you need to set this document style accordingly, or you will not have the option of doing retention or rather doing retainage. And so then in some cases you may need to edit the PO. All right, so now we have our PO, we've set up a retention percentage and a max, and you set the max up just because if you continue to 
change order out and you just decided, hey, we're never going to take more. The terms in the contract say we're never going to retain more than X, then you can accomplish that. What you see here is the actual invoice. And so you can see as part of this invoice, a standard invoice, the retention or rather retainage, excuse me, is being calculated automatically on the bottom. You do not need to do anything for that. Now, it's only as retainage we'll talk in the possible challenges about how that's accounted for. But good to note, we just created an invoice. The invoice pays the whole amount. We just hold back or retain a percentage, in this case, $2,000. So this is part of the regular invoicing and is automatically calculated based on the PO. And you just go find those lines just like you would uh, any other PO lines. Okay, so now we go back to the PO, right? So one of the questions you'll obviously have is where am I at with retainage? How much have I retained? You know, and so you can go back to your PO, order life cycle, upper right, and you can see, and what you see the retainage 9,500 is because I have my cursor on that uh, column, I guess, or line, if you will, on the bottom there for retainage. But the point is it gives you the ability to see those details, right, in that graphic or from that graphic, all right? And so if you hover over it or click into it, you can see the details. So that's the auto calculated in the PO lifecycle graphic for retainage or managing it. Okay, so now at the end, we're going to create an invoice, but the invoice is not gonna be your standard invoice type, right? You may or may not get um, invoiced for this, but it's probably part of a closeout process and so now you have all this retainage there's maybe a punch list there's maybe litigation who knows but you've gotten past that and now you're ready to release the retention amount retainage what have you and so that's what this particular graphic shows you pull in the retainage amounts very similar to matching it's a little bit wonky when you have multiple lines how you do it but you have to pull them all in and so you have to make sure that your retainage amount on the bottom is zero because you've effectively pulled all the retainage lines or retainage amounts over time into this particular invoice to be payable. And so you have to make sure what you've pulled in balances with the net of the retainage, making sure you've paid it all out. So again, that's just a little bit different. Uh, you don't have the ability to partial out that. It's all or nothing. Okay, so lastly, and again, these are very initial thoughts, um, but here's some of the things that stick out in my mind as I go through this process about possible challenges. First up, the retainage functionality can't be self-service. Again, lots would argue, most would argue, doesn't matter because it's really driven by a sourcing process. Fair enough. Next, how do you communicate the retainage to the buyer if you have come to some arrangement and you're using the requisition to initiate the sourcing event you would just have to potentially either create DFFs or define where on this uh, requisition transaction you're going to list said retainage. Next, the buyer needs to set the document style. So I showed that when it was creating the PO. Retainage is enabled on a document style and it's not on your standard PO. So that needs to be set appropriately or when you get to the PO, you won't even have the ability to retain or to leverage the retainage amounts you've set up. Fourth, there are no partial retainage payments. Talked about this just a second ago. Again, probably doesn't matter because you, it's an all or nothing end of the project, but just know that you can't pay out some of it and hold some of it back. And then lastly, uh, this is something that stands out to me as a procurement guy. I'm not the expert on accruing, but we have the way that PO is uh, retainage is set up. It will hold back a portion of the PO line from invoicing payment. So I now show as paid the full amount of that line, but in actuality, I haven't, I've retained 10, 15% of that line. And so I, I effectively may have to account for that. Um, rather than having shown it all as an expense. So uh, that's just something I see, again, initial thoughts, possible challenges. Okay, so that's it for this video on uh, retainage new functionality. Glad to see it. Looks good. It's definitely a great start. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.